I have two sets of slits here, a double slit and a single slit. The slits have the same width. And I hope you can see over here. I will shine a laser beam at these slits to show you their interference and diffraction patterns. But before we do that, let's talk about what we would expect to see. We have learned that for double slit interference, the equation we use is d sine theta equals to m lambda. And for small angles, we can say that sine theta is y over l. So this will become d times y over l equals to m lambda. And we get bright fringes if the m equals to 0, 1, 2, 3 whole numbers. This means if the slit separation d is a constant, the distance to the screen is a constant and the wavelength of the light is a constant, then the y would be proportional to m for the bright fringes. That's why all the bright fringes produced by the double slit interference, they are all about the same size, equal distance apart. So at the center of the screen, I would have m equals to 0, that is the bright spot, bright fringe, and uh, it's uh, m equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, they are all bright fringes. The shape of the fringes on the screen depends on the shape of our light source. If I'm using a laser pointer to provide a point light source, I would get dots like these. If my light source is long along the slits, I would get lined fringes like these. For single slit diffraction, we have the same equation. d sine theta equals to m lambda. And again, for the small thetas, we have d sine theta, which can be replaced with y over l, would equal to m lambda. For the single slit patterns, we get dark fringes when the m is 1, 2, 3, 4, that kind of whole number, but not 0. That means that if I label the m values on the screen, I would get 0 for the bright fringe, and then 1, 2, 3 for the dark fringes. That's why we have a central maximum that is twice as wide. And these other fringes, they have the same size. And in terms of the intensity of the fringes, for the double slit interference, it turned out that the, the fringes, they have just about the same intensity. So all these spots, not only they have the same size, but also they have this just about the same brightness. And for the single slit diffraction pattern, not only the central maximum is twice as wide, it is also much brighter than the other fringes. So this next, next fringe is a lot weaker, and the next one is a lot weaker and then weaker. Notice how this, these slits, they all have the same width, but these patterns produced by the double slits, they are very close together, but uh, for the pattern for the single slit diffraction is a lot wider. This is because for the same L, the same distance to the screen, the same M, the same order number, same wavelength, D times L would have to be a constant. This means the bigger the D, the smaller the Y, which means the bigger the D, the closer the fringes on the screen, because Y is the distance on the screen. Remember the interference pattern produced by these half circle wavelets? When I increase the slit separation, the interference fringes get closer together, just as we expect to have from the equations. If all of these slits have the same width, then the slit separation d here is bigger than the slit width d over there. This is why the pattern on the screen is wider over there because the d is smaller. The smaller the d, the bigger the y. On this side, the d is bigger, therefore the fringes have to be closer together. And if we consider this case more carefully, we can see that the double slit actually consists of two single slits.
So not only do we get an interference pattern like this, but also we get two diffraction patterns from the two single slits. So each slit gives us a one diffraction pattern. The other one gives us the same diffraction pattern but shifted by a distance d. But because the slit separation d is going to be much smaller usually than the pattern on the screen, the y on the screen. So if the d is much smaller than the y, that means uh, this, the two diffraction patterns by the two slits are only shifted by a little bit, which means those two patterns that they almost overlap completely. This means that when we consider what we will see on the screen from a double slit interference, we just have to consider these two overlapping with each other. So for the double slit interference, this will be what we see on the screen. It is a combination of this pattern and that one. So we get the small almost the same distance uh, fringes, same size fringes under the envelope of this uh, single slit diffraction pattern. So we would see groups of bright fringes like these. The large pattern is produced by the single slit diffraction. The little pattern over here is produced by the double slit interference. Right now this is the single slit diffraction pattern so as you can see, the central maximum is twice as wide as uh, the other bright fringes. And you should be able to see at least one set of bright fringes on each side of the central maximum. And you may be able to see also the second set of bright fringes on the uh, two sides. Now I'm going to change the slits to double slits, but the same width slits. Right now, these are the double slit interference pattern. Because the slit width is the same as the single slit, the previous one, so the big pattern is still the same as before. But inside the big pattern, as you can see, there are lots of those little equal distance apart, equal width, little fringes. Those little fringes are caused by the double slit. So the double slit interference pattern are those little dots inside the single slit diffraction pattern.